In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your slicer settings to get the most out of your 3D prints when using the Creality Sonic Pad. You may have already printed something that you slice without these changes and found that the quality is pretty good, and that's quite likely. However, as we go a little further and start to ramp up the speeds, you may start to see issues. What we need to do is change our start and NG code, disable any kind of pressure advanced or coasting options, and then decide if we want our slicer or our firmware to control retractions. To make all of this as easy as possible, Creality have provided profiles to use with Cura if you have one of their more popular models. At the time of filming, there are currently only profiles for the Ender 3 Pro, the S1 Pro, and the version 2. However, as the S1 Pro is direct drive and the other two are both Bowden printers, you'll probably find that you can adapt one of these to fit whatever printer you have. The first thing to do is follow the link in the description to Creality's download page and grab the Cura Profiles user guide. Extract all of the contents and you'll find a guide document as well as the profiles themselves. The PDF file is a short guide to setting up a new custom FFF printer in Cura, but also, most importantly, they provide start and NG code for each model. Let's start by creating a new printer following Creality's guide. First, we need to fire up Cura. I've updated to the most current version at the time of filming, which is 5.3. I'm going to start by showing how to set up a profile for my Ender 3 S1 Pro, which is covered in Creality's guide. With Cura open, the first thing you need to do is add a new printer by clicking Settings, Printer, and Add Printer. Now you need to select to add a non-Ultimaker printer, but you won't get this option in older versions. Select to add a non-network printer, and then in the Custom section, add a custom FFF printer. I'm naming mine Ender 3 S1 Pro SP for Sonic Pad so that I know the difference from the other Ender 3 S1 Pro profile I have. After clicking Add, I'm taken to the Machine Settings window. Here, we need to enter all of the settings Creality have given us in their guide. If you have a different printer to one that's covered in Creality's guide, then take all of these settings from your current printer profile in Cura. My X and Y dimensions are 235 millimeters. My Z height is 250 millimeters and I have a heated bed. Once I've typed in all of the print head settings, again, copying from the Creality PDF guide, I need to find the start and NG code for my specific printer. Once I've found the section for the S1 Pro, I'm copying everything under the start G code heading and then going back to Cura. As the box for the start G code is very small here, I'm making sure I delete everything before pasting in the new G code. You can't right click to copy and paste in this section, so instead use Control V on a Windows computer. This will paste in all of the start G code, then do the same with the end G code. If you don't have start and end G code to copy in for your printer, then the best thing to do is to take the standard Cura profile start and end G code, but then make the following modifications. Clipper doesn't use the G29 or M420 bed mesh commands. Instead, it uses the command bed mesh calibrate to take a new mesh like a G29 code would or you can use bed mesh profile load equals default to load up your save bed mesh. Therefore, if you have a bed probe and want any bed mesh taken into account when you're printing, then delete any line that has a G29 or M420 code and type in the bed mesh calibrate or bed mesh profile load equals default commands as shown here after the G28 line. Copy in the NG code from a standard profile. You shouldn't need to change anything. I have read that the version of Clipper that the Sonic Pad uses automatically adds the mesh, so you don't need to add it into your start code. But I haven't been able to verify this myself, so I prefer to have one of these codes in there because I know that it works with them. Now, some would say that the best way to set up start and NG code with Clipper is to create a macro for a start print and end print, and then simply point the start G code in your slicer to these different macros. This is one way to do it, and I'll show you how to do this in a future video on macros. However, for now, this is perfectly acceptable. Once I'm done with the start and NG code, I can click on the Extruder 1 tab. Here, we need to make sure the compatible material diameter is set to whatever we'll be using. For most, this will be 1.75 millimeters. I'm leaving the nozzle size at 0.4 millimeters, but change yours if you use a different size nozzle. 0.4 is the standard nozzle size that most 3D printers come with. After clicking next, we can see our newly created printer profile in the drop down list at the top. Now we need to import the print profiles that Cura has supplied. To do this, go back into the printer settings by clicking Settings, Printer, and Manage Printers. Make sure that your newly created profile is active and then click on Profiles on the left. Select Import in the top right 
and then find the profiles wherever you save them on your computer. Select the right folder for your printer and then select a profile you want to import. Select Open and the profile will be imported. You can find your newly imported profile in the Profile drop-down list in your Print Settings menu. Follow the same process for any other profiles you want to import. Unfortunately, you have to do them one at a time, which is a bit annoying. I had an error with the normal speed profiles, but I was able to fix it by reducing the initial printing temperature to the same as the initial layer temperature and then saving. We now have profiles that we can use to slice models ready for our clipper controlled 3D printer. Again, if you have a different 3D printer, then choose the closest matching option from the Creality supplied profiles and adapt it. For instance, if you have a direct drive extruder, then use the S1 Pro profile. If you have a Bowden tube, then use the V2. As long as you've set all of the right information in the machine profile, then they'll work fine. I made a couple of tweaks to these profiles, like increasing the retraction distance on my Ender 3 version 2 because it was down at 0.4 and generally I use a minimum of 4mm retraction on that printer. I also disable acceleration control because once we've tuned input shaping in one of the next couple of videos, we won't want our slicer interfering. All these Creality profiles really do is speed everything up to the kind of speeds that a clipper controlled 3D printer can normally cope with without you having to manually change every field in your current slicer profiles. This way you can quickly start benefiting from the increased speeds that the Sonic Pad can offer without having a lot of trial and error. One thing to consider is whether you want your slicer to handle retractions or whether you want your clipper firmware to handle them instead. One argument for using firmware controlled retractions is that you can change retractions while a print is running or between prints without having to re-slice a model. I'd advise sticking with slicer controlled retractions unless you know you want to try firmware controlled retractions. I can't say I've played with firmware controlled retractions that much and if my opinion changes I'll make a video about it. Make sure you hit subscribe to see any new videos I make. You now have high speed Cura profiles that are designed to work with your Sonic Pad. You have much more accurate print time estimates and are dangerously close to 30 minute benches. But while we're here, we may as well install and set up a plugin that will enable us to not only send our sliced file directly to our Sonic Pad from Cura, but it will also send along a little picture so that we can see what our finished print is going to look like on the Sonic Pad itself. Click here to go to that video now. Or if you have no interest in speeding up your pre-print processes or don't want to see what your print is going to look like before you start it, then click here to jump straight to the input shaping video. It's a good one. I'll see you there.